when the world progresses forward and you and I will have to adapt to the new conditions available around. If we are not able to adapt, nature has no compunction. It will wipe us clean. Have they not? Uh, they, many plants have become extinct in nature. Many animals have become extinct in nature. Why? They were not able to adapt themselves to the new environments available around. If man also is not conscious enough, is not smart enough, is not intelligent enough to understand the nature of the situations around and try to change himself. Change means adapt himself to the new environments. Is it so sad in this world that nature's law works and is ex I mean, extinct? Is not Roman Empire died away, Greek Empire disappeared, Mesopotamia gone? All are great cultures, great people. The greatest heroes were brought at that time. Literature, everything was there. What happened? Where are they now? Why they were wiped out? They were not able to adapt themselves. And a new system that is arising around and about themselves. Don't you think that we have changed, we have come to a point where the old methods can no longer be a remedy for the sufferings that we have got? Why? Because the source is something different. It is not physical, we are comfortable. Nobody can complain that the worldly physical conditions, ah, there are poverty, no doubt. It is not emotional, it is not intellectual. With these levels, we are the objective scientists are trying to find out all the remedies of it. But when you sit back and think, why this problem of aid? Why this... Uh, uh, the various sorrows in the world, economic upset, poverty, disease, mutual rancor. No two countries can look, sit together and look at each other, each angry with the other. Why? 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 When you thus analyze this cause of things and uh, hunting for the cause of Effects is called the intellectual method of analyzing and understanding the world outside. Causation hunting is the preoccupation of the human intellect. This is how all science has developed, inquiring into cause of things. Why is it that we are suffering? In spite of our continuous effort, our goal is clear, and we are putting forth all our effort as much as you can, as never ever before in the history of mankind. And yet, by the time you solve probably a problem, ten different problems arise. Why is it so? What is a spring? Where do all these sorrows come, all these uh, problems come? When they analyze, they found a wondrous new, I mean, truth, which ordinarily the materialist or the scientist may not immediately accept it. But the world outside is an echo, a reflection of our mind. The one Swami is talking. You are all intelligent people listening. Can I say that all of you are understanding in the same way? It cannot be. 
you interpret and receive the idea and interpret it according to your mind. He understands it with his mind. So your world outside is ordered by, governed by, controlled by your mental attitude. Haven't you heard people saying that this hell, this world is a hell? Haven't you heard the people saying that it's a heaven? Successful people would say that it's a wonderful world. Unsuccessful people would say that, where can I get potassium cyanide? Why? I want to die. <coughs> See? Why? The same situation, the sun and the moon and the stars and the, and the atmosphere and the elements are the same. Yet, one feels it is a wonderful field, another feels most miserable. Even in your house. Maybe your elder son thinks that, you know, daddy and mummy, aha, it is heaven. And the younger fellow thinks that I am waiting for getting 18 years old so that I can get out of these wretched people. Hey, the parents are loving him completely, fully. Yet his interpretation is that he is in hell. This mental disturbances, indisciplined mental disturbances, prompts everyone to live on the instincts and impulses of the mind. Every moment. Utterly selfish, heartlessly desiring everything in the world outside, wanting to acquire, possess, embrace, indulge and enjoy. There you are, like any cattle, we live only at the mental level at this moment. All of us have got the intelligence to analyze and realize that what I am doing is wrong, but you have not got the strength to live up to it. There is nobody who doesn't know that he is immoral. Nobody in this world is there who knows that the drinking is bad, smoking is a uh, ruinous. And yet, ask them, why are you then drinking? Swamiji, it's not that I don't know it. I know, but I can't live up to it. Everyone cheating or telling a lie or becoming angry and uh, cr cruelty and cr criminal nature. It's not that you don't know it, but you say that I'm sorry, I cannot be away from it. I am compelled to do things. See? Now then, friends, each individual is a unit in this universe, in this world, and all these individuals put together is called the community, or the nation, or the world itself. Apart from the individuals, there is no world. All of you put together without any distinction and differences, all your minds put together is the world outside. So if uh, the majority of the minds are selfish, arrogant, utterly egocentric, vulgar, without a character. That society, that community will be of the same character. The nation, there is no nation, only a country where a population lives. There is no integrity between them. And internationally, no understanding. Individual, through individual perfection alone, world perfection can be as bad. This is the conclusion arrived at by the great thinkers of the past. In all scriptures of the world, I am not talking of Vedanta or the Indian textbooks. Is not Bible saying the same? Is not the Quran saying the same? Is the Brahmapada or the Buddhist saying the same? Every great master who has given enough thought to it has understood that the cause for the sorrows of the world outside 
is the imperfection or the disturbance of your own mind. 